Hi, I'm Michael Bean, and welcome to MyFreeActingClass.com uh, lesson on Monday, June 22nd. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about camera technique and uh, going over a couple of scripts. And I also uh, want to get started talking about subtext. Uh, this is something that I've wanted to devote some time uh, in one of our lessons to for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and so I'm going to get started on it today, and then uh, hopefully some of you are able to come back tomorrow, and we're going to uh, look at it in more detail. You know, today uh, we're looking at an extremely short scene from a Paramount feature. It's the kind of thing uh, that, um, with sometimes with big budget projects, they will cast all of the leads somewhere that is not Vancouver. Uh, and then they will cast supporting characters here in Vancouver. You know, that's good news if you're a Vancouver-based actor. They're casting you know, some stuff here. And the, uh, I mean, it's the reason often uh, historically that people gamble on moving to Los Angeles is because they want a shot at those leads. Um, but, uh, but in my experience, it's such a gamble. It's such a gamble. You know, Vancouver uh, is so much smaller in market. Um, oh, I didn't intend to talk about this, but I think that it is a good place to start, which is that I really think that uh, the regional markets are a good place to start. You know, that uh, whether you're in Vancouver or whether you're somewhere else, uh, that uh, if you are a skilled actor in a relatively small pool of skilled actors, you just have a better shot of getting work. Uh, so some of you have... Uh, some of you have um, either watched the video of, or you were here for the sessions uh, with the casting directors. Yeah, can I see hands? Like some people watched some of those. Yeah, great. Okay, so the so you heard them say uh, that uh, they will get you know uh, several hundred submissions you know for uh, a, even like a fairly small role. Uh, now, a number of years ago, I had somebody from an LA casting office come in and sit in on my class. And she said that, she's like, well, for, you know, a small role, uh, we'll, oh, I don't know, we'll see 100 people in person, you know, and, uh, you know, then and probably watch like 50 tapes. You know, so, and this was, you know, four or five years ago. You know, the, here in Vancouver, they would maybe audition 15. There, they were seeing 150. You know, and my best guess is, uh, and this is just a, a guess based on the numbers that I've seen from uh, the um, casting workbook, which is one of the services that you know, actors use to submit uh, themselves or agents use to submit actors. Uh, there were 10,000 casting workbook members approximately the last time uh, I saw the stats for it. You know, so that's just like a basic benchmark of like how many people are trying to act professionally in Vancouver. Now, uh, LA has about 30 times as much production. Uh, my best guess is uh, that it also has about 100 times as many actors. You know, so that means that if there are 20 people who look like you in Vancouver, who are your, you know, approximately you know, looking like you, you know, whether that you know, their skin tone and their hair color and you know, their height and their age. You know, and if you go out for commercials, especially, or did sort of pre-quarantine, you probably know those 20 people already, right? You know, again, you know, those of you who like audition pretty regularly, like, can I see some hands? How many of you are like, oh yeah, like I know people who look like me. Totally. Especially when I was going out for commercials a bunch, you know, when in my 20s, I was like, balding funny guys, what's up? Hey, it's all the balding funny guys again. There's a slightly older me and slightly younger me and bigger, heavier me and stronger me and skinnier me. If we're all in this together again. Um, the, and so if you can imagine going to Los Angeles where instead of 20 people who look like you, you, there are 2,000 people who look like you. You know, there are a hundred times as many actors in uh, LA. Yes, there's 30 times as much production. Yes, they often cast the leads there, but there are a hundred times as many actors. Now, now somebody in, in my experience, um, and I've mostly taught young people, but you know, with adults as well, if somebody's really a focused, dedicated actor and they are auditioning regularly and doing the things that support that, over the course of a couple of years, they will you know, get auditions and, um, and often they will actually book something, even if it's small. Now, I have a friend in LA who uh, graduated from UCLA, really top-notch film school, you know, spent 10 years um, actively trying to get film and TV work. After that, 
Um, it took her eight years to find an agent. She booked her first gig last year. Right? The, uh, that's what it's like to be in a more competitive market. And I would have said that she has everything going for her. So just a little bit of context for that. Uh, oh, man, this is the thing about having half an hour. There's so much I want to teach you. Uh, and uh, I can only fit so much of it. In. Let's get in, uh, on to uh, just like a quick blitz of uh, camera technique, you know, which uh, it is review, but I think is useful. Uh, the, uh, so eyeline, eyelight, uh, frame marks movement. Uh, so eyeline is the imaginary line between your eyes and what you're looking at, right? So right now my eyeline is, I'm actually looking at my own face, you know, but if I was looking directly in the camera, that's eyeline right to camera. You want your eye line to be just one side of the camera or the other. If there are six characters in the scene, I would say try and make as many of them as possible, the one eye line for the person you're talking to, put the other uh, on the other side of the camera. Eye light, I don't have too much eye light in this new space. Maybe that's the angle, let's try. There we go, right? So I was shooting down from slightly below myself, and you can see that my eye light wasn't very good. Now look how much more alive this looks. Now this is what you're, we are used to seeing in film and television, you know, and I'm gonna look like a better actor with this much light in my eyes, uh, than I am here. Like here, just with lighting, I'm going to look less alive, less sparkly, less enthusiastic, which is good for me to see because I want to look like all those things when I teach these lessons. So I'm going to put it up here. Uh, you know, I'm going to figure out, bring some boxes to stack it on the next time I teach uh, a lesson here, which is going to be tomorrow. So you can hold me to it. You can be like, did you do the thing? Uh, the, the background is not super important. This background where I'm at, uh, distracting. You know, you're much uh, too likely to like look at the picture and the copier. I mean, at least everything is dark back there. But for instance, if we look at Maddox's background, you know, much better, right? It doesn't need to be blue or green. It's nice if it is, you know, but just a uh, simple background, really, really nice. Uh, the uh, your mark is the, the little, you make a tape mark for yourself. They'll have them in auditions that show you approximately where to stand, where the microphone is best, where the sound is best. You know, uh, frame, I can quickly show you this, a uh, little blast from the past from folks, folks who did this lesson with me uh, a number of weeks ago. Uh, we've got uh, this here, medium close-up, uh, is the framing that you will mostly have for auditions. Okay, that's the medium close-up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. uh, so that's, it's head and shoulders, you know, and just a little bit besides. Shoop, medium close up. You know, then uh, close up, you know, and whatever the big close up or the extreme close up where they're going in and in and in on the eyes, you're only really going to see in horror movies where they're like, nah, 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 nah. you're not going to use it in auditions. Although, okay, something that I've been playing with in my Zoom classes uh, and with tapes is that you can use depth as long as you use it really selectively. There are times where it can be really fun now that we're in total control of the framing to go like, I'm talking to my person and I lean in for a second for emphasis and then I'm gonna go back to the medium close up. And we can do that because we have so much more control, uh, especially if you're uh, doing something by Zoom. Okay, so the medium close up, this is where you want uh, your acting. Um, medium shot, it's down to just below the waist, uh, only if there's going to be a bunch of movement in it. And even in something as simple as this, you know, if I'm back here, you know, a bunch of space over my head, you're just not going to see as much detail. So I don't have very much eye light and I'm far back. You can see that the uh, background is now even more distracting, but also you're getting less emotional content. So there's my quick blitz on uh, the uh, things that go with uh, camera technique. You know, it's not rocket science. It's really worth figuring out how to do it in a fast, easy way. Uh, now let's take a look at the script uh, that I wanted to focus on today. Uh, this is from uh, what, when I was helping somebody audition for it, uh, was just called Untitled Paramount Feature. Okay, so we've got a bunch of crossed out stuff here. Um, if we can, we would always read the crossed out stuff. And if this was a story lesson, you know, I might actually do that in more detail. Um, I'm going to need, actually, uh, I'm going to need somebody to play uh, Meredith for me. So who wants to be the teen daughter that I'm trying to scare out of bed? Volunteer? You need a volunteer? Come on. Anybody? Hey, Tate, you want to help me out? Okay, great. 
you know, so I'm, so I'm going to unmute you and you need to unmute yourself, you know, and then we'll go back to looking at the script. You have one line. It's super important. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if we were doing the story lesson, we might read all this crossed out stuff because it saves us from guessing. Um, you can see this was uh, Jennifer Page, so, so uh, Clark and Page, we had Corinne Clark come in uh, to one of the lessons uh, three or four weeks ago. Interior Meredith's house, bedroom, day. Oh, I need a little brother too. Um, mm -hmm, mm, who's going to be my little brother? Anybody? Any volunteers? Come on, wave a hand in here, something. Hey, uh, you, uh, wh what about you, Juanita? You want to be my little brother? Yeah? Okay, great. There you go. You just unmute yourself. It's super straightforward. Again, you only have one line. So easy. Right. Here it is. Uh, so, interior Meredith's house, bedroom, day. Uh, the scene heading int uh, means interior, x means exterior. A kid, six, in robot mask, stalks his sleeping sister. Little brother? Roar! Meredith blinks sleep from her eyes. Out. Little brother runs out of the room. Dad pokes his head in the room. The decor in here makes two things clear. She loves animals and she loves YA material with steamy bad boys. If you were to look up, if you, know, you were like, what is YA material? All you'd have to do is throw it in the browser and you would find this one means young adult novels. So we're talking about Twilight and that kind of thing. She's got posters on her. Uh, last chance, you sure you don't want to go to grandma's? I can't, I have to study. Okay, try to get out of your tomb this weekend, would you? Dad leaves, Meredith hurries to the window and looks out over the lounging cat. She focuses on a barn in the distance. Below, she sees her family pack into a car. Now, um, if you are working on something, and you know, again, this is something that is, I would go into more detail on the story lesson, but if you're, uh, thank you, uh, Juanita, Yay. Uh, and Tate, we appreciate it, that's exactly what I needed. Uh, the, uh, if you were working on something like this uh, that uh, didn't release what it was called, uh, you can still often find information online. You just have to be sneaky. You know, if you were auditioning for this, you'd have the breakdown. And it, even if it said untitled Paramount feature, it would list names of the producers, the writer, the director. And if you put enough of those things into Google in different combinations, you likely would find this project. It also might be as easy as going to IMDB and uh, looking up the, uh, the name of the uh, producer and the writer and the director and just seeing which one pops up to the top. You know, so in this case, because this is a past uh, feature, what I did was a Paramount feature, Meredith Dad, the names of the characters on the script. And look, first thing popped up, Monster Trucks, 2016 American Monster Action Comedy, checked it on Wikipedia, yep, yeah, there we go, classmate Meredith, okay, good, and I can read the description of it. You know, I go on here and I find it, you know, and then this just gives me a sense of the style. You know, now, I'm not going to go through all the story questions, but I'm just going to show you a little clip from Monster Trucks so you have a sense of the style of the show that we're playing. Um, I skipped the first 30 seconds because it was all like spooky. And, you know, there was an intro in it. I think it was uh, Nickelodeon. Uh, and the logo was in the top too. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. It's Nickelodeon and Paramount. Are you? You're so intelligent. What is that? Creech. You Creech? He likes hiding in my truck. This man might have had a word because he's not going anywhere with you. Oh, yes, you are. What's this? <clears throat> this is a great freeze frame for the end of it. So uh, Meredith, you know, is the uh, the character that showed up there and said you named him Creech. You know, so the teen girl. I mean, realistically, they probably cast somebody in their early twenties. That would be my guess. We went and uh, looked up that actress on IMDb. So we just get a sense of what we're working. With. You know, now the I'm gonna pop open the uh, chat window here. Oh, right, you know, hard to, uh, to read things. I'm just looking at the uh, chat comment. Okay, uh, so the next thing that I wanted to show you is this, because I like it. Um, you know, sometimes having a visual you know, is really useful. And so uh, this is reflective of most of our lives. 
to what I think, what I say. Uh, when we are uh, working with film and TV material, uh, we are working in the realm of uh, what is often called psychological realism, which means that what the characters say is not enough information for you to know how they feel. And there was a time when acting, what, uh, the, the sort of dominant form of acting was very uh, indicative. I mean, it's, well, it was a long time ago, but they're like, it, I'll see if I can find one for one of these lessons. Uh, but you really can find these like old acting textbooks that are like, this is little grief, and this is medium grief, and this is big grief, you know, that uh, are really like, here's how you portray that with your face and your body and your hands. Uh, the, but at this point, what we're looking at is if the character says, uh, the, uh, I'm leaving, you, you, we actually have to look at their, uh, listen to their tone of voice, we have to look at their body language, we have to see where their eyes are going, we have to look at where they are and who they're talking to, to know whether you know, uh, I'm leaving you know, means I don't want to leave, you know, or um, you can't keep me here, you know, or uh, goodbye forever, you know, or this is dumb, or like, there's a whole bunch of different things that thoughts that could be represented in that. Yeah, and so when uh, we talk about subtext, uh, that's what we're talking about. Sub meaning under, so what is under the words? Yeah, and this is where acting lives. Everybody gets what's on the paper, you know, but uh, the way that you bring this line uh, to life, you know, that's really sort of where we see the good stuff. You know, and I, again, I just like this visual, which I just pull, fully pulled off of Google, uh, because uh, it illustrates it for me. The text is what everybody sees. It's what's on the page. Subtext is what's under. So I want to play with subtext a little bit, just as an addition to what we would normally do uh, with camera technique. You know, so uh, let's go back and look at the Untitled Paramount you know, together. You know, so uh, if you are playing Meredith, and these are the audition sites for the dad, you know, but like, let's say that this is the start of a long scene for Meredith. And that's possible. Uh, you can see that they put the start mark uh, after uh, this moment. You could go into the audition, or if you were doing a self-tape, you'd be like, oh, you know what? It's way more fun to start the story up here. Yeah, and sometimes they'll do this, especially if there's uh, long chunks of reaction, uh, or if there are physical actions they just don't want to see done badly. You know, they'll just be like, yeah, you know what? Skip it. Just start here. And I think you're always within your rights to go like, you know, I prepared something really fun for the top here. It's okay if I start from a couple of lines before. As long as you're doing it as a polite and respectful actor, totally legit. Uh, so, with, um, so with that in mind, you know, if you're playing Meredith, uh, you're asleep, you know, uh, your little brother uh, you know, uh, wakes you up, you've got to see him, react to him, get him out the room. You know, the, this baseline, uh, which I, I hope you don't mind me continuing to come back to and come back to, but it takes 30 seconds, yeah, and I think the repetition, if it gets it into your bones, you're like, oh yeah, right, of course, that's what we did. First, you try it exactly the way it's written, you know, on camera, and you see if it works. You know, then, in the sense of like, does it look right? Because you know, it often will feel awkward no matter what. Uh, the, then, after that, you try keeping the action, if there's action physically out of the frame, you know, and okay, so see if that works, right? It's so like, instead of handling the thing here, I handle the thing here, does that work? Yeah, it works. Uh, then, uh, if those first two things aren't working on camera, uh, then you try modifying it you know, so that you can still tell the story. So in this case, uh, the, what I would recommend, and why don't I get somebody else to demo instead of me? So uh, remember, there's a RAR, and your line is out. All you have to say is out, super straightforward. So I need uh, somebody who is sitting in a chair. Um, hey, Wes, you want to be my demo? Come on, say yes. Good. Okay. So I asked, just uh, you just got to unmute yourself, and you do great. You know, and then uh, what I want you to do is tip the camera down slightly so that you can lean back in your chair and lean your uh, and lean your head on the, the side of it. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. You know, and then close your eyes. Perfect. And wait, and you could do this uh, with a chair. I see that you're actually in a bed, so that's like very convenient. Um, the I don't recommend you know, like shooting the bed scene in a bed, even if you've, you've got one. Um, the, but you uh, do, can do this with the chair. So you're there, you're sleeping, you know, I'm gonna give you the RAR, you know, uh, you know take your time, like, you know, seeing me and reacting, okay? Uh, stand by, you know, and just tip your head off to one side because you're sleeping. 
There you go. Good. Yeah, and you do this in a chair. You switch your you know, uh, uh, body forward, and nobody will you like it. Looks fine. So sleep, sleep, perfect. Uh, stand by, and roar! Out. Perfect. I guess <laughs> that's exactly what I'm talking about. No. So, uh, so uh, what she did there was she. Uh, had the like startled moment, you know, and she didn't advertise that it was coming, right? She she was just relaxed and asleep. She came up. She took time to see the person, uh, the uh, the little brother. You know, there was a, like a moment of thinking it through before the line, after the line. That's where the acting lives. You know, it's before and after. And so physically telling the story, you can see that if you skipped that, the scene's just not as interesting. And you know, then the dad comes in on the other side and is like, hey, now I'm adding to your you know, uncomfortable morning by like, you know, bugging you about something else. And then the thing there would be to have a really different relationship uh, with each of those things. You know, now, uh, on the other hand, you know, like, do we have uh, somebody, hey, uh, Emerson, do you want to be the little brother? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna unmute you. There you're unmuted. Right, so, uh, the start as far back as you can go with the camera still seeing you. Like, you know, do you have to get up out of your chair or your bed or whatever you're in? Yeah, yeah do it. Do it. Like, like, what I mean, can you stand up? Oh. Right, and then go back. Yeah, perfect. Good. You know, like, and I mean, maybe for film and TV, this outfit would be too much, but for right now, oh my God, it's so perfect. You know, so go, go even further back if you can. Right, because the camera can see you from back there. And so uh, right away, uh, the first, and, and I talked about this uh, in the Tuesday lesson last week, the first 20 seconds, sort of before the, the action starts, super important. You know, so right, so I'm gonna say stand by. And when I say stand by, I want you to already get into like exaggerated sneaking mode. Like you're just having, just to, so that I can see that you are loving this, exactly. Just loving sneaking up on your sister. And I want you to really take your time. I want you to take a long time sneaking right up to the screen and get really close and go Rawr! you know and then just laugh if you can just you know just kill yourself with like how hilarious and weird that was until I tell you to get out okay but like um, you want to get the physicality in your body when you hear stand by because often what happens is they say stand by somebody else presses the button or even if, if I'm doing zoom I say stand by I start recording and then I say action so if you don't already have the action in your body when somebody says stand by, it means the first moment the camera sees this, now I'm sneaking. And that's why you want to get into sneaking mode when you hear stand by. Do you understand, Emerson? Okay. Yeah. Stand by. So get in your body. Get, me, get those arms up. Action. Closer. Closer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Love it. Close, 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 close. Get your face down here. Go. Ah. Good. And then you have to love how scared I am and just enjoy my reaction. Exactly. Out. Ah. Perfect. And then come on back. You know, and so Emerson, if we were workshopping that, you know, and that might be the entire, that might be the only scene the little brother shows up for. Right? And they are not going to fly somebody and their guardian or parent down from Los Angeles to say RAR. You know, like, probably not. So they're for sure going to hire a, a Canadian if that's the case. If that's all that the little brother shows up for. You know, so <laughs> he is adorable, right? Like the, the onesie totally adds to it. Uh, the, uh, if you were doing that again and we were workshopping it, I would just say when you turn to go, you, you did a very actor thing, which was you backed up while staying perfectly in line with the camera. And so that looks like a performer who's like, I think I'm not allowed to turn, right? And it looks technical, as opposed to the little brother who, you know, the little brother can be like, okay. Right, like you turn to go and still look back over your shoulder if you want us to see your face. Yeah, and I think that's great. If you were submitting that as a tape, you also would want to like cut while we could still see Emerson. You know, so uh, while well, we can still see it. Now, uh, if you're coming in as the dad, let's look at the dad's first line. Yeah, and here's where we uh, can talk about physicality you know, and we can talk about um, subtext. You know, so using that first 20 seconds, taking advantage of it, dad pokes his head into the room. Uh, 
right? Like the, uh, and then last chance, you sure you don't want to go to grandma's? You know, and Meredith says, I can't, I have to study. You know, the, uh, so let's go back to the group. So last chance, you sure you don't want to go to grandma's? Um, oh, somebody type it into the chat window because then I can keep talking to you and I don't have to type it. So it's last chance, you're sure you don't want to go to grandma's and Meredith says, I can't, I have to study. You know, so now we're just going to highlight those, uh, those two lines, right? So if you're the dad and you're coming in, uh, can I get somebody you know, to, uh, who wants to play the dad for me? All right, and do that physicality. Yeah, come on, one of my adults, you want a dad for me? Perfect, you bet. Excellent. Yeah, so spotlighted and I gotta unmute you. Wait, I did that wrong. I asked to unmute. There we go. Aha. I was giving the kids a chance, but okay, I'll do it. Oh yeah, of course. Like you know, the it's a kids lesson and adults lesson. You know, like so you get to see my messy room. It's all good. Right. You know, it's like super distracting and interesting, isn't it? You know, now what if you stood up, even if the camera's there, and you just leaned down into the top? You know, so that it was we really had the sense that like you know she's in bed and you're uh, leaning down in. Oh. Uh, okay, I'll try to get off screen. Yeah. And and I would say if you're auditioning, I. Uh, even though it says you poke your head in, you actually don't want to start off screen. You want the decision makers to see you right from the first moment they start watching the video. And some of these, especially if it's uploaded to Ecocast, sometimes it'll use the first frame as the keyframe. You know, and so they'll just see your roof instead of seeing your face. Yeah, exactly. So you want to start there. You know, and, and you probably want to start a little bit further back, right? So you want to start back here and then be like, hey, kiddo. And then come in like, you know, so that you come into the medium close up. Uh, and again, uh, that first line is last chance. You sure you don't want to go to grab this? Stand by. Uh, and action. Last chance. Sure you don't want to go to grandma's? I can't. I have to study. All okay. right. Suit yourself. Okay, great. Super. I don't know what the last line is. There's another line, right? <laughs> well, and, and just the first one, but can you say, uh, I wanted to walk through the physicality for everybody because that's part of the lesson. But then just a little list, like tease of subtext. Is it okay if I keep shopping uh, with you, Yvette? Yeah. Fantastic. You know, so um, then uh, if you were going to uh, play with a couple of different subtexts, you know, for this uh, first line, you know, wh uh, what if you played with um, the, uh, uh, something like, uh, oh my God, are you still in bed? <laughs> like okay. The, right, so uh, what I would normally do in class, and I mean, Yvette's an experienced actor, so she doesn't need this, but I'm gonna get her to demo it for me anyway, uh, just so everybody else can see it. So I would get them to say that. You know, so uh, the, uh, so just say, I can't believe you're oh. in bed. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so just say that, just say the subtext first. I can't believe you're still in bed. But, and then I would say in class, I would say, now say the line like you said that. You know, so now we're gonna do the start of it and stand by and action. Last chance. Sure you don't wanna go to grandma's? Right, so it reads much more judgmental when it comes from the subtext. You know, and um, what if the subtext was, are you okay? Okay. It's completely on the other uh, side of things. So give me, are you okay? Are you okay? But, and, and, and even more concerned, right? Like, like she's in bed and she's looking really rough. Are you okay? Good, and then say the line like you, uh, like you said that. Stand by, and action. Last chance. Are you sure you don't want to go to grandma's? All right, and so, uh, thank you so much, Yvette. That's exactly what I was after. Uh, and so you can see that um, this is where the art of the actor lives. The art of the actor is in choosing which story you want to tell, you know, and um, sometimes it, I know that it can feel like, well, I'm trapped. Like I'm not really a creative person because you know I'm because I'm they they're telling me what to do, and so I want to remind you that like that's the top of the iceberg, and you're doing all of this. So you do all of this, and it's all invisible, and it makes this part look amazing. Yeah, and often what happens when you do that is the writer, the director, the producer, they look at the work and they're like, yeah, see, I am amazing. I I was right. This is genius. And, they, and even they don't necessarily notice you know, that you're doing all of this work. But this is where uh, the art of what you're doing lives, it is in the subtext and in the choices that you make that fill up what's underneath the line. Okay, uh, Viola is absolutely correct. It is four o'clock. Uh, so let me give you all permission to unmute yourselves. There you are. Uh, you know, shout some goodbyes at each other. 
Uh, and then anybody wants to stick around for questions, I'm here. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. 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 Oh my God, the kid in the onesie? <laughs> that, it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. So satisfying, <laughs> so satisfying. All right, um, questions about anything. It doesn't have to be about the lesson today. Uh, you can just unmute yourself and shout them out. With this few people, you know, we're unlikely to be talking over top of each other and you can always wave your hands if you're worried about somebody talking over top of you. Yeah, Quinn, please. Uh, maybe not, not really applying to the class, but uh, what's a good movie you've seen recently? Oh gosh, you know, I haven't um, I haven't watched movies you know in the last you know, uh, like month or so um, because I've been focused you know, with like reorienting life so that I can spend a bunch of time with my son on Galliano, you know, which is oh, so I, I've been you know like hugging actors instead of uh, hugging kids instead of like you know playing with actors. Um, oh, nice. Uh, so that's like that's good for me. Uh, How about uh, all time favorite? All time favorite. All time favorite. Oh God! You know, like I mean, should I you know, be like a classic guy and say something like Sophie's Choice? You know, <laughs> something like that. Be. Um, there's so few movies that I like enough that I've gone back and, and watched them over and over again. I think what I really love is being taken on the journey, and so I tend to like you know, watch a movie uh, once. You know, but my, the students in my adult class, you know, are always referencing movies. They're like, yeah, you know, it's like this actor in this movie. And I, I have no idea the movie they're talking about. And they're like, you're an acting teacher. How can you not know all the movies? It's like, mm, I've only got so much time. I've got to prioritize some things. Uh, right? like, I'm glad that my students are like really, really into that. You know, um, I don't think it is necessary to have watched all of the movies. I think that's one more way that actors psych themselves out. Like, well, I'll... I'll be able to be an actor when, you know, when I do all the research and take all the classes and watch all the movies and I know all of the you know, famous actors. Um, there is an exercise uh, that, uh, it's funny, like it's just on my mind because this is why I watched Sophie's Choice, uh, is that uh, the, this exercise of picking a movie by uh, one of these actors who does incredibly detailed emotional lead uh, work that has emotional depth to it. Uh, and then, going back and watch it, uh, like watching the movie, seeing which scene was the most emotionally impactful for you, and then going and watching just that scene multiple times and watching it with the sound off and then watching it while like covering their face so that you can see what they're, how they're telling the story with the rest of their body. You know, um, really useful. Awesome. Um, the, where are we? Oh, good questions. Um, so what makes for a good actor? Man, uh, that's a, I'm not sure I can give a, like a simple answer to that excellent question. I think what makes for a good actor uh, long term, okay, oh, here's, I've never heard this particular answer. What makes for a good actor long term is how passionate you are about it. Because if you are really passionate about it, you will practice more and you will get better than other people. You know, like I work with young people and I've just seen it over and over again. Somebody comes in and some part of it comes easily to them. And I could list all the parts, right? I could say, well, like emotional availability is part of it and technical aptitude, you know, and there's like self-awareness is part of it and voice, you know, and uh, physicality and understanding the story and how to tell story. Like there are all of these parts of it. And definitely I've seen people come in with aptitude for one part of it, where it's like one part of it or two parts of it come easily to them. But those aren't necessarily the people who are still doing it four years later. And the ones who are like, man, I don't know why, but this is my thing. And I actually just want to practice. The people who want to practice, if we go four years down the road, will be substantially better than the people who came in with aptitude. And again, I think it's another way that actors punish themselves. Actors are like, well, do I have talent? You know, am I like born with it? And it's like, I've seen people with aptitude. I've never seen somebody who just like every part of it came easily to them. And even the ones who have loads of aptitude, if they don't practice, they get bypassed very, very quickly. You know, uh, and so the, that's my best answer to that, Sarah. You know, and I think the one that is most supportive, you know, it's one that I as an actor feel most supported by. Where I'm like, right, regardless of where I'm at now, if I figure out how to love this enough that I actually want to practice, that's gonna take me where I wanna go. And so th that's more of the questions. Like, what part of this do I love? How do I do more of that? 
Um, how can we find the tone of the story if the director is fairly new? Mm. Uh, you can still look up the producer and uh, the um, executive producers, and you can watch the uh, clips from the last projects they did. So if the director doesn't have projects that you can find on YouTube, then you can uh, give your best guess by looking at the uh, producers and executive producers material. Uh, what are casting directors looking for nowadays? Oh my God, Dude, like it's, um, they're looking for somebody who uh, sort of fits their, the, their idea of the story, you know, and they're uh, making their best guess on that based on your headshot, which is why it's so important to have a headshot that actually looks like you, so that when they watch the self-tape of you, they're like, yeah, that's the person I saw in the photo. Oh my God, that, they do fit the story I have in my head. And then inside of that, you know, they want somebody who grabs them, you know, and what either grabs them by with who they are as a person or with uh, the kinds of choices they're making for their acting. Because honestly, when they watch the tapes, they can't tell. They don't know if you're interesting because you're just an interesting person or if you're making interesting choices about the story. And it actually doesn't matter. You know, uh, as long as it tells the story and looks like what uh, some version of what they've got in their head, you know, and grabs them in some way, you know, that's gonna make it viable you know, for them to send on to directors and producers. And those are the people who actually decide. You know, I would say also there's like a, a certain basic level of technical competence, which is one of the reasons you come to a class like this. Uh, because you are trying to figure out, okay, how do I just not get disqualified on simple technical means, right? Because like, if you do great acting, but there's no light in your eyes and you're standing too far away and the audio is bad, you're never gonna get forwarded to decision makers doesn't matter how like emotionally deep your acting is and how well you're telling the story. If you don't meet basic technical requirements, they're, gonna, they're not gonna watch more than 20 seconds. They're gonna be like, nah, can't really see him, can't really hear him. You know, let, let's move on. Uh, oh, you sent me an Instagram message. I never am on Instagram. I'm sorry, I'm confessing. See Bullock, whoever that is. I'll go on Instagram now, right after this thing, and you'll be my excuse. And I'll be like, thank you for making me go on Instagram. I'm not sure I'll post anything. I should, I probably should, but I probably won't. Um, the, how long have I been doing this? Depends how you look at it, you know, uh, Amanda. Um, the, I think that, you know, my like practical answer, you know, is that like I started acting uh, in public school, you know, so I probably started at like age 10, you know, and uh, you know, if you mean how long have I been, auditioning and working professionally as a film and TV actor, you know, in that case, you know, um, so what, so that's like 32 years, you know, if for that, that question, how long have I been, you know, auditioning and working professionally as a film and TV actor, probably 20 years, you know, um, you know, and I think that, I don't know if, if y'all can, uh, you know, uh, commiserate the, uh, with this, but like, you know, maybe Sarah or Quinn or maybe Maddox, you know, the, you know how the subjective experience of acting changes so much that you're like, who was that guy from a year ago? Like, I'm, I, what was he thinking? What was, that wasn't acting. This, this is acting now. So I think emotionally, my answer to that is always like, I don't know, six months. You know, even so, so I've been exploring acting in different ways for like 32 years, you know, but, but emotionally it always feels like it's new, Amanda, because like, here's the thing I'm excited about right now. And I don't even, like, who was that guy six months ago? He didn't know things. Um, you know, and that's just proof of the way that I orient to acting, which is like, I come at it through feeling and through how it feels, you know, and so part of what keeps it exciting for me is that some part of it always feels new. And that means that it often is, involves a lot of uncertainty, you know, like it, 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 there's a, a certain sense of like, it, the newness keeps me excited, you know, but it means that I'm never like, 32 years, uh, I'm badass all the time. Instead I'm like, Ooh, like where's the uncertainty? Where's the vulnerability? Where's the part that's alive for me? That's what I like. That's how I like teaching. Yeah. Um, me. Um, and then how do you practice? Um, Amanda, can you uh, tell me what you mean? You mean like you know, when, you mean as an actor? Like what is my, uh, what do I do to practice? Is that, is that your question, Amanda? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, okay. So, ha, on a good day, uh, let's let's go with that answer. 
like, okay, on a day where I do all of the things, you know, and I think I set the intention to do this every day so that if I do it three times a week, I'm in good shape. It's sort of like when somebody works out, they're like, okay, I'm like, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna plan to go for a run every day. And if I get out twice a week, that's success. You know, so that's uh, sort of, you know, my practice. Um, so uh, right now, uh, I'm, taking a, uh, I'm taking an acting class uh, that involves uh, doing uh, three mock auditions a week where they, they're like, here's the thing, and here's your six minute time slot for tomorrow, you know, which Zoom makes really possible in a way that I think is very, very cool. Um, the, or two auditions that call back. So, so I do that for film TV scripts. And then for uh, my own practice, I like wake up, uh, journal. I think journaling is really, has been really useful for my own practice as an artist because it helps me notice what's going on inside me. And I think that that's, for me, that's very important in terms of like being able to then use those things to make choices. So daily journaling, uh, this is called The Artist's Way uh, by Julia Cameron that, uh, that I really like. I'll put that in the chat. The Artist's Way, Julia Cameron. Um, old book, 90s, you know, there'll be stacks of it in any library. You probably could get a PDF online pretty easy. Uh, the, uh, then I'll uh, do yoga uh, and I, I'll do voice work. You know, and there's a kind of voice work that I think is most appropriate for film, which is called the Fitz Morris voice work. I mean, obviously we're using our voices to tell stories, but there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, types of voice work uh, that involve articulation and projection. And if I start over articulating now, or if I start projecting now, then both of those things sort of take you out of real film and TV, right? So uh, singing, uh, oh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'll do, uh, yeah, so I'll do yoga and, uh, and often uh, I'll use my yoga practice as a place to learn my lines. Uh, like I'll put the audio of my uh, scene on and I'll like do yoga so I'm moving my body and having to focus on something while also running the lines uh, and that helps get them into my body, right? Um, then I'll do uh, voice work, you know, about like, you know, 10, 15 minutes of that, which often mostly involves making weird noises and shaking and crying, um, you know, because like all of those things release tension. And it's, you know, we don't have a lot of opportunity, or I mean, maybe you do, but like, I grew up in this like, you know, kind of culture, you know, and so the, uh, I'm reluctant, you know, to do, especially do a lot of crying in my daily life. So to have a practice where I'm like, I can release that tension and do that. And that's just a thing that my body can do. I don't have to be like attached to it meaning something bad, you know, really good for me. Uh, then I'll work on monologues. You know, uh, I try and have you know, between two and four monologues going on uh, at all times because then at those I know I can practice uh, without having somebody else practice with me, right? And the and one of the things I love about acting is the way that it makes me feel, right? So I'm like, so having something that I can change the way I feel by by doing this practice anytime I want to. Oh my god! Especially during quarantine, that's amazing because I'm like I feel gross and stuck, but I know that after I rage out as you know, uh, you know, uh, Richard of Gloucester, you know, and you know, like I'm a creepy, horrible person as Ralph from uh, Brian E. Lavery's Frozen, you know, and do the like sweet, you know, opening monologue, you know, uh, from um, the narrator. Uh, from our town, you know, like those are the three things. Are, oh, and I, 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 one of those, I, this I only started six months ago. I hope this is interesting to you, but because like, this is my practice. So of course I'm like, of course, let me tell you about me. Um, you know, but right now I have like uh, a dramatic monologue that's in a dialect. I have a dramatic monologue that's Shakespeare. Uh, I have like a, a comedic monologue and then I have a poem. Uh, and you know, I, I only started making one of my four monologues a poem in the last six months. And I love that. I mean, I think that, especially if you are not particularly fond of Shakespeare, choosing a poem that is meaningful for you, just as the whole idea is come back to the same words time after time after time so that you can find depth to them. You know, and then Christine's question is, does cold reading help? Absolutely. In my, in my opinion, you know, like becoming a skilled cold reader or sight reader, you know, the reason that I work monologues is so I can work the same material over and over and over again and continue to find depth in it and bring that to my work. The reason that I uh, do uh, on camera scene study uh, or on camera scene practice or cold reading is so that I can work new material all the time and practice like pick it up, do it, you know, move on to the next thing. I think both of those are really uh, useful for practice.
And I know that it took me a long time to talk about those things. Oh, and then after monologues, if I'm really doing all the things, I'll also do 10 or 15 minutes of singing um, because I find singing really vulnerable and it's new for me. I'm not very good at it yet. Um, but I found a singing teacher that I really like, uh, whose name I will actually put in here because I think he's amazing. Uh, and uh, Simon Isherwood, uh, he, uh, he does uh, private coaching by Zoom. Uh, and so the, that whole thing will take me probably like an hour, you know, and there's lots of times you know, where I waste more than an hour, uh, you know, looking at random memes on Facebook, you know, or like basically fretting and resisting, you know, about like the things that I should be doing and I'm not. I'm like, ah, man, man, oh, that was an hour and a half. It's like, I could have done all of my acting practice in that time. And I know that actually would have made me feel good and move me towards the kind of actor I want to be. Um, so the, that, that was our extra 15 minutes. You know, uh, thanks for you know, sticking around for questions and I hope to see some of you for more subtext tomorrow. Bye. Oh, right. You can't Bye. unmute yourself. You can. Okay, good. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming.